Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Alchemy's granular synthesis engine to create ambient soundscapes and also morph and control those soundscapes. And this isn't the only way of doing this. You can also do this in Quick Sampler and Sampler as well. They don't specifically have granular synthesis engines, but there's certain modulation techniques you can set up to mimic this sort of effect. And if you wanna learn more about sound design and synthesis and sampling as a whole, you can check out my Logic Pro 10 309 course over at macprovideo.com. It's a 21 part course where I go through sound design primarily for music uh, production, for creating sound effects, ambient effects, soundscapes. I go through a bunch of different sampling techniques. So it's a really cool course if, if you're interested in getting into more ambient sound design. So granular synthesis is a subset of sampling. And the way I like to think about granular synthesis is like a short loop within a sample that jumps around at different positions and uh, can be modulated in different ways. So instead of just playing a sample beginning to end or end to beginning like a traditional sampler, you're sort of picking apart the sample and just grabbing little pieces of the sample. So the tone or texture of the soundscape that you ultimately create will have some of the tone or texture of the original sample that you loaded in. So I'm gonna do this from scratch. So I'll just click on File, Initialize Preset. Again, I'm in the Advanced tab here. And if I go to Global here, you'll see that there are four sources. These are like your synthesizer oscillators, but Alchemy can use traditional waveform oscillators, or you can drag and drop in any sample you like. Yeah, yeah. So I've got this vocal sample here in the key of D minor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and buy this. I'm in splice here, but you can also use loops from Logic's built-in loop library or drag and drop in any audio file you like. So I'll just drag this directly into the sound sources and you'll see I get four options, additive, spectral, sampler, and granular. I'm gonna choose granular and then to view my granular synthesis engine, I'll click on source A here and I can view all of these parameters. Now, right now, if I just play any note on my keyboard, it's just gonna play back the sample normally. If I play higher, the pitch will go up. If I play lower, the pitch goes down. So that's just what a traditional sampler would do. I want to sort of break this up and grab little pieces of this sound source. So the first thing I like to adjust is the grain shape. I like to think of this as like the envelope of the grain. So I, mean, I like to use the triangle shape. It tends to be the smoothest. And then you can adjust the number of taps. So think of the taps as almost like a number of echoes. And then the tap spacing is like the spacing between those echoes. So if I pull both of these down, you just hear there's one source, right? There's just one playback. But if I pull up the number of taps and I pull up the spacing between those taps, it's like multiple parts of the sample are playing back at the same time. Now, in addition to that, you can adjust the overall volume. You can adjust the grain size. This is the actual length of each grain. You can adjust the density. This is how many grains can overlap at once. I'll set this to 10 just to have a lot of them. And there's two random parameters here. You have R time and R pan. R time will add a random offset to the grain position so you can get more of a random effect. And then R pan randomizes the panning of the grains. Now, the thing with granular synthesis is if you're creating soundscapes, you probably want to add a lot of reverb to transform this into something else. Also, you'll get a lot more variation and variety if you have a longer sample. Here's a longer instrumental loop. It's got more tones and textures in it. So let me try dragging this in instead, swapping that out.
Cool. I think I like that more. And let's add some effects to this. So down in the effects tab down here, I'll add some reverb. I'll use the convolution reverb. And over here in this menu, you can select an IR. An IR is a impulse response. I'll choose this one here called deep space. And then you can adjust the wet and dry balance over here. So you can hear that the timbre of the soundscape I'm creating is sort of being derived from that original loop. So it's really cool to set up a granular chain like this and then just experiment with different samples until you find one that sounds like, you know, what you're trying to create. So just to have a little bit more variation, I'm going to add a delay in here as well. And with soundscapes, the way you play on the keyboard is um, you have to kind of keep your chords open. Like in most situations, you're not going to end up with a result that you can just play triads, you know, and play traditional chords and melodies with. I was just playing sort of perfect fifths in my right hand and then just bass tones in my left hand. Now, if you want to take this a step further and you want to be able to modulate your soundscape, you can use the perform section of Alchemy to learn some parameters on either your XY pads or on these uh, control knobs here, and you can map them to different snapshots on the transform pad here. Now, just to keep this brief for this video, I'm just gonna set up four of them, one, two, five, and six. I'm also not gonna mess around with the XY pads or the envelope controls. I'm just gonna use some of these knobs down here, these control knobs. So what you can do is, let, let's say that I want this knob, this position, to control the grain size and the grain density, right? All you have to do is click on grain size, go down to the modulation router here, turn on a modulation router, and set up a target under perform for control one. So what you're saying is that this knob is going to be modulated by control one, which is this knob down here. And you can see that it says A, grain size. And then you can pull up the depth, either in the positive or in the negative. Let's pull it up in the positive, and then let's simultaneously adjust the density. We'll also make that be controlled by control one, pull the density up, and I'll, I'll pull actually pull the, the starting point of the density down, but then I'll pull up the depth. So you can see that there's these little orange uh, little boundaries here. These boundaries are showing you the depth of the potential modulation. So if this control is all the way up, if control A is all the way up, these uh, the value you're going to get on these two knobs is all the way up. If you pull them all the way down, the value is going to be where they are right now. So that's really cool that you can you can sort of, you know, use these controls as a macro control for these, but then simultaneously have a macro control for all of these all at the same time. So let's uh, go to the R time. Let's modulate that with control number two. So that's this one right here. I'll pull this down pull up the depth, there we go. Let's go to the number of taps. Let's make that one controlled by control three. And let's do this one uh, in, in inversely. So I'll pull the depth in the negative. So now the value starts way up here, but then as you pull up that control, it actually pushes down the number of taps. And uh, the tap spacing can stay where it's at. I think everything is fine here. Let's map something else though to control four. Let's go into the, back into the effects and we'll go to the reverb. And let's say that I want to adjust the level of the wet and dry signal with that control. Let's say that in one position, I want dry up, wet down. And in, in the other position, I want dry down, wet up. So what I'll do is select a dry, click on, and map that to control four. And then I'll pull up the modulation amount. Then I'll click on wet. I'll also map that to control four, and I'll pull this down in the negative. 
So now when I play around with control four here, if I pull this up, it's going to give me more dry. And if I pull it down, I'm gonna get more wet. So now what you can do is you can create snapshots for each of these positions here, and you can adjust the parameters over here. So let's say snapshot one, I want them all down. Snapshot six, let's say I want them all up. And then snapshot two, let's say I want, um, I don't know, maybe like about halfway with these. I'm just kind of playing around at random. And then snapshot five, I want these up, but then I want these two down. So now when I move this pad around, this transform pad around, you can see you can morph between these different positions. And the great thing about this is you can also record this as automation. So yeah, I could go on and on forever and swap out different samples and play with the settings and add more modulation effects, um, but I think you get the point. Uh, another thing you can try playing around with that's really helpful is adding some filter parameters to these knobs down here. You do it the exact same way. So if I want to control the filter cutoff, you just click on the cutoff, turn on a target, assign it to whatever knob you want, say control five, and then you can throw this into the mix. So now you can filter everything uh, as well and get even more textures out of it. So the possibilities really, really are endless with Alchemy. And I find it an incredibly creative tool for creating super ambient uh, soundscapes without using any third-party plugins. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Again, if you want to check out my Logic Pro 10 301 course over at macprovideo.com, I'll leave a link to it in the video description below. As always, thank you for the support and thanks for watching.